Millions of people around the world go out on the streets and rooftops to look at the amazing cosmic phenomenon. Another planet right next to the moon, a big red one. At first, everyone's excited. Mars showing up out of nowhere is having a strange effect on humanity. Just as the moon can affect the psychological and physical state of some people, Mars's unexpected visit is causing people to behave pretty strangely. Every night, the sky is lit up by the white light of the moon and the red glow of Mars. Many people get a sort of instant insomnia. Some even stop drinking coffee because they no longer feel sleepy. Mars brings out energy and a little wildness in people, <laughs> making them laugh more, and even drives a few poor people crazy. They begin to go out of their houses more often and enjoy the unusual night sky. A few days later, everybody can see what's happening. Mars is getting bigger. Scientists announced that the red planet is slowly moving towards Earth. A collision is inevitable. Earthlings only have a few years left. A few months ago, a huge asteroid crashed into the red planet with such force that Mars simply flew out of its own orbit and went rogue. The chance that Mars would fly close to Earth was always going to be pretty high. After about three seconds of being announced, the news went viral, and panic set in. The situation's getting worse and worse. The closer Mars gets, the more it affects people on a physical level. Hundreds of videos pop up showing collision simulations of Mars and Earth. And there's no happy ending. Want to see what happens? One famous blogger asks her followers. The Earth's almost completely covered with water, and Mars is all dust, sand, and rocks. Then she puts a huge watermelon in the middle of her room. From the far end, she launches a bowling ball at it. Strike! Mars looks almost the same size as the Moon now. It's about to come into the Moon's orbit, and it's affecting the Earth's magnetic field. Floods, hurricanes, tsunamis, powerful thunderstorms – they go from bad to worse. Animals go crazy. Birds no longer migrate south. The polar northern lights appear in the Caribbean. The economy isn't handling the news that well. People stop showing up to work. Why wouldn't they? They just want to have fun and be with loved ones. There are enough resources on the planet to last until the catastrophe, so no one's even trying to fix the Earth's problems. Clothing, food, cars, yachts, whatever, everything loses its value and becomes free. Every day, huge street parties pop up all over the world. People decide to live their last months in peace and harmony. The global catastrophe is uniting humanity like never before. To go out with a bang, Earthlings team up to organize a huge rock concert. The red giant destroying our beautiful blue planet. Yeah, rock and roll's the perfect soundtrack. There's just enough time to eat, dance, party, and listen to good music. Huge stages are built all over the planet. It's every musician's last concert. During all that preparation, hope suddenly appears. Scientists have calculated all the events that'll occur when Mars crashes into Earth, and they have a simple plan. Luckily, humans had already planned on moving to Mars, so they already have been building spaceships for years. There's no time to get to another planet before the collision. But the good news is that people can wait out the disaster just outside Earth's orbit. You get to sit in a space station, munch some popcorn, relax, and enjoy the show. When the dust settles, it might just be possible to return to Earth, or what's left of it. After learning about this plan, people start working on finishing the ships night and day. Everyone in the world pitches in. There are still two years left before the big day. The huge concert stages are converted into more space stations. Mars is now giving people more energy, and with epic teamwork, people manage to create thousands of stations in just a few months. That's what happens when 7 billion people work together. Farmers, physical therapists, chefs, engineers, athletes, accountants – all on the same team. Mars is now closer to us than the Moon. The red giant blocks out the sun, and our planet is plunged into darkness. There are only a few days left. People are working like ants in a massive colony, putting the finishing touches on several hundred thousand space stations. It takes four whole days for everyone to get on board. Plus, there's the loading of supplies, 
animals, fish, seeds, plants, vegetables, fruits, video games, fruit roll-ups. The red giant is scheduled to enter Earth's orbit in a couple of days. That's when it will really pick up speed. Mars is only a little more than half the size of Earth, but up in the sky, it looks infinitely huge. The ships start taking off. People take a last look around, memorizing every inch. In a few hours, it'll all change forever. The stations fly up far enough away to clear any orbits. Two worlds colliding together should still have a soundtrack, though. Rock stars on every ship organize an outer space music festival. To the awesome sound of rock, Mars enters Earth's atmosphere and burns a thin layer of its own surface. This releases an incredible amount of energy. It gets faster and faster and smashes into the Pacific Ocean. A huge blast wave sweeps across the entire planet. Everything is lit up by flames, and everyone on the ships has to put on sunglasses to avoid being blinded. Our blue planet is turning into a fiery one. The dust of Mars mixes with the water of Earth. The force of the impact goes through the Earth's crust into the liquid-hot magma. Hundreds of pieces of Mars, some the size of entire countries, are somehow floating in the atmosphere. The collision generates so much energy that all oceans boil and evaporate. Seas and rivers of molten metal are now spreading all over Earth. Days, weeks, months pass. A belt made up of bits of Mars forms around the Earth. It's like a fiery version of Saturn. It'll take a long time before it's safe to land back down. But humanity can't stay alive on the ships all that time. Food, water, and oxygen will run out after a few years. But scientists already have a plan. The ships flip a switch and become huge cryo chambers. The ships are equipped with energy panels, and the roasting hot Earth's giving off a lot of energy. Totally enough to keep the ships working while everyone on board takes a few thousand year nap. As soon as the planet cools down, humans will wake up. Hundreds of thousands of years pass. One day, alarms go off simultaneously on all the ships. People wake up, slowly. Their bodies are exhausted, but after a few billion cups of coffee, everyone's ready to go. Down on Earth, new continents should have formed, and the atmosphere is most likely way different. The planet might have lost its original orbit, so it might be spinning at a different angle. The seasons as we know them, gone. All the water on Earth evaporated in the first few hours. But there were huge glaciers on Mars, which might have melted on impact. Mars may have shared its water with our planet. The clouds of dust and dirt should have settled by now, and the ground should be pretty good for growing stuff on. All that magma probably spewed up a bunch of useful minerals and chemicals. It's going to be difficult, but humanity somehow must adapt to the new Earth. People are ready for anything. All the Earthlings run to the nearest windows to see what their beloved planet looks like after all these centuries. Um, where is it? People are craning their necks, looking out at the empty spot where the Earth used to be. The impact of Mars was so strong that it pushed the Earth out of its orbit around the Sun. It's gone. Great. What are we going to do now? Some bearded guy grabs a guitar and says, Let's play! It's staring at you, and you're staring at it. A giant eye that seems to be pulling you into an abyss. You're hovering over it in your space copter. But however scared you might be, you still need to do your job. So you send your copter down to the surface of the red planet. Right, that's where you are, on Mars. But first things first, you take a moment to remember everything you know about the fourth planet from the Sun. It's the last of the inner planets. Those are the planets that lie within the asteroid belt. They're also called terrestrial, since they're made up of rocks and metals. The atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. It contains 95% carbon dioxide and a mere 1% of oxygen. In other words, don't even think about pulling off your helmet. Anyway, there's no time to waste. You land on the surface of the planet and find yourself in a brownish-red world. It's a good thing you're wearing a spacesuit. This place is freezing cold. The thermometer sewn into the sleeve of your suit shows minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to take your first step on the Martian surface. 
The planet looks quite colorful, and the hue of a particular area depends on the minerals that make up the soil. The ground under your feet is covered in fine dust. It looks like rust. The same orange dust is in the air. Good thing you have your own supply of oxygen and don't need to breathe Martian air. The layer of this dust covering the surface of Mars can be from 6 to 40 feet thick. You hope you'll avoid getting swallowed by some Martian quicksand. You start walking, feeling very light. Mars is just 15% of our planet's volume and a mere 11% of Earth's mass. It means that gravity here is much weaker. Its pull is 38% as strong as the pull of gravity on the surface of Earth. You jump up and down and then try to run several hundred feet. Ha! You haven't even broken a sweat. What makes it harder for you to explore the place on foot is that the planet's surface is rocky, covered with craters and volcanoes, old dry lake beds, and canyons. You see something huge towering on the horizon, but you try to suppress your curiosity. You'll have enough time to figure out what it is later. Suddenly, a massive cloud appears in the distance. It looks as if a huge herd of horses is approaching you. In reality, you better get back into your copter and fly away as fast as you can. That's one of Mars's infamous dust storms. They mostly occur during the summer in the southern hemisphere of the red planet. They can sometimes cover the entire planet. And you see the largest ones from Earth. You hop into your copter and set a course for the eye that scared you so much. Winding channels that look like veins run through the eyeball. But the closer you get, the less it looks like an actual eye. Soon you realize it's a crater. It's giant, almost 19 miles across. Around the crater, which looks as if it has a pupil, there are other even bigger craters. They likely formed billions of years ago. That's when Mars had to withstand multiple attacks of space rocks. But why is the eye crater darker than the surrounding landscape? Scientists think that once, there was Martian water in the enormous pit. Remember those channels? They were likely carrying that water. And since the crater was filled with water, it stopped some substances and minerals from eroding away. Now, remember that towering something on the horizon? It's time to go and explore it. When you come close, you realize it's the largest shield volcano in the entire solar system, Olympus Mons. It's more than 370 miles in diameter, which is almost the same size as the state of Arizona. You tilt your head. Wow! The mountain is 16 miles high. It's also rimmed by 4-mile-high cliffs. To picture the sheer size of the volcano, let's make some comparisons. The largest volcano on Earth is Mauna Loa, towering around 2.5 miles above sea level and stretching 75 miles across. Sounds impressive! But the volume of Olympus Mons is around 100 times larger than that of Mauna Loa. The Martian giant could swallow the whole chain of Hawaiian islands from Kauai to Hawaii. But why is this volcano so large? It might be the result of lower surface gravity and higher eruption rates. Or the reason might be the red planet's crust, which is very different from Earth's. It's static. You see, on our planet, the crust is made of 15 to 20 moving tectonic plates. As plates move over hot spots producing lava, new volcanoes form, and the already existing ones become extinct. That's why lava can get to the surface through many vents. But on Mars, the crust isn't broken into the same tectonic plates as on Earth. And the lava has nothing to do but pile in one very, very large volcano. So, how about getting closer to the enormous mountain? But once you step out of your copter on Martian soil, the ground under your feet starts shaking. Well, that's a Mars quake. But how can it happen if Mars doesn't have any actively shifting tectonic plates? Specialists from NASA are sure Mars quakes occur when energy inside the planet gets suddenly released. It leads to rock fractures and cracks in the planet's crust. Another powerful jolt, and one of such cracks opens right next to you. You fall to the ground, afraid to move. But soon, everything calms down. You wait for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, and get up. Oh look! Here's a perfect opportunity to explore the insides of the red planet. The crack is large enough to send a special research robot. The planet's crust is thin and consists of volcanic basalt rock. 
The mantle that surrounds the core of the planet is made up of thick silicates, oxygen, and some minerals. You can probably compare it with soft, rocky toothpaste. Mars's mantle is also much thinner than Earth's. It's just 800 to 1100 miles thick. As for the planet's core, it's made mostly of iron, nickel, and sulfur and is between 900 and 1200 miles wide. This core doesn't move. That's why Mars doesn't have a planet-wide magnetic field. Unfortunately, your drone is now lost in the depths of the red planet. You leave it there and continue your exploration. Your next destination is Valles Marineris. It sounds more like an Italian red sauce, but it's actually an enormous canyon, or rather a canyon system, that runs along Mars's equator. It's as awe-inspiring as Olympus Mons, more than 2,600 miles long and over 4 miles deep. The thing is so huge, it could span the entire continental United States from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's make another comparison. One of the most famous canyons on Earth is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. But it's 10 times shorter and around 4 times less deep than this canyon on Mars. Some scientists think that Valles Marineris is the edge of an enormous tectonic plate. It moves so slowly that almost nothing has happened in that region over millions of years. And the movement of this plate probably began 3.5 billion years ago. Anyway, the only thing left on your today's to-do list is to visit Mars's moons. They're among the tiniest in the solar system. Phobos is the largest of the two. It orbits a mere 3,700 miles above the surface of Mars. There's no other known moon that travels closer to its mother planet. It whips around the red planet three times a day, while the second moon, Deimos, needs 30 hours to complete one orbit. Phobos is getting closer and closer to Mars, about 6 feet each 100 years. Within the next 50 million years, it'll either crash into the planet or break apart and form a ring. Happy but tired, you return to your spaceship. Tomorrow, you'll continue exploring the magnificent red planet. And who knows what discoveries are awaiting you. Ah, Earth. The third rock from the sun. The blue planet. You get it. Its atmosphere is made up of around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. A nice balance for any living creatures to breathe. The weather here is also perfect for life to exist, unlike places like Saturn, Mercury, or any other celestial object in our solar system. We have the troposphere to thank for that. It's the densest part of the atmosphere on our planet and is 5 to 9 miles wide. It's the layer of the atmosphere that always affects our weather and secures the right conditions for life to exist and to have bodies of water. Earth is just sitting in its orbital path, minding its own business, revolving around the Sun until BAM! Venus and Mars swoop in and spoil the fun. No one wants to leave poor Earth alone. These two relatively large celestial objects moving toward Earth will have dire consequences for our planet, starting with changes in its orbiting trajectory path. The planet's orbits in the solar system have to maintain the right balance so that nothing goes haywire. Of course, if any large object approaches Earth, it would throw our orbiting path off course. The planets will revolve around each other, which will cause plenty of natural disasters on our lands. This will also affect our rotation timing, potentially slowing it down. Days will not flow, but drag by. Animals that rely on daytime will need to readjust their biological clocks. Nocturnal animals will also need to figure out how to cope with the long nights. Humans have adjusted pretty well to the 24 hours a day timing. Time itself is just a human construct to measure things. We'll have a tough time sleeping and adjusting to the stretched day. Marine animals rely on the natural current flow to migrate around the oceans. With Mars and Venus crashing the party, it looks like they will also need to find new paths. Birds migrating to other lands throughout the year will also be confused and not know what to do. In general, the Earth's temperature will rise, and massive heat waves and permanent climate changes will occur. This brings us to our next issue, the heat. The radical temperature rise will turn everything into a barren desert. It'll be summer all year long, especially if Venus is in the picture. Most of the planet will dry up and won't be suitable for growing crops. Venus is hot, I mean really hot. 
Even though it's not the closest planet to the Sun, it's still the hottest. The temperatures on Venus are close to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which will melt you like an ice cube. The lands on Venus are generally flat, probably due to the temperatures. It's mainly hot because its atmosphere is thick and traps the hazardous gases inside. If Venus inches its way towards us, it'll invite those gases to our atmosphere and compromise it. Mars, or the red planet as we know it, is very cold. That might stay the same if it starts rotating around us. It's also home to the largest dormant volcano in our solar system, which makes Mount Everest look like a tiny bush compared to a tree. With so much instability, it might just wake up one day and spew out molten lava. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, which makes the planet chilly. Its gravity is quite similar to ours. It's actually very cold and has ice caps in the poles covered with carbon dioxide. The same is true for Mercury. You can only last there as long as you can hold your breath and be in the sweet spot between the sunrise and sunset. The three planets orbiting each other will eventually collide. It's just a matter of time. And the moon, just hanging out like a fly on the wall, will be so insignificant that something will eventually throw it off course and another planet will capture it to its orbit. Or, in the most dire case, it will collide with one of the two intruding planets. Earth will experience extreme tidal waves like nothing before. The two new planets revolving around Earth will cause a major imbalance, making our gravity shift out of control. Each tidal wave will be bigger than the previous one and will cover the dry land. Plenty of little scattered islands in the oceans will be completely submerged. Coastal cities and towns will also be home to fish. Flat countries in general will need boats to get around. Dams and dikes won't be enough to stop the water from coming in. Everyone needs to move towards higher ground to escape the floods. With the climate getting hotter, the polar caps will melt like ice cream on a sweltering summer day and add to the water level rising. Within a few months, the whole Arctic will be nothing but liquid. But wait, there's more! The crust will wear out due to the instability of the Earth's surface and fluctuating gravity. The Earth's crust is mainly made up of oxygen, which means we're basically walking on air. We might experience more earthquakes than before, and dormant volcanoes will wake up from their deep slumber. The skies will be covered in ash, making flights impossible. No one can travel by sea or by air. Importing and exporting will become history. The overall climate will get hotter, just like in Venus. The three planets orbiting each other and their huge mass might even unintentionally welcome other planets and celestial bodies to join the party. So, what if Jupiter decided to turn up? Now, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. To give you an idea, the Earth would be just the size of a grape if Jupiter were the size of a basketball. It also has the largest storm we can perceive. That's known as the Red Spot, a place twice the size of Earth that has hurricane-like storms that have been going on for hundreds of years. Now, by the time you're done watching this video, you can expect the storm to still be going at it. Since the planet is huge, gravity must be quite strong here. It also has many moons, some of them of our little Earth. There will be no room for any proper space among the planets. Jupiter's moons will be thrown off course and latch onto other planets around. Some of the moons might collide with each other, causing massive debris to be displaced all over the place. The gravity of the planetary party will attract comets to enter the atmosphere, potentially crashing down on us. Oxygen levels will deplete, so the Earth's crust crumbling will continue. It'll rip open the ozone layer, causing heavy strokes of ultraviolet waves to enter our atmosphere. We won't be able to step outside for too long without some protective gear and oxygen tanks. Human civilization will change drastically. We'll all live in sheltered containers that will provide clean air and safe and filtered sun rays. The shelters will be sturdy enough to withstand frequent earthquakes. We will grow only enough crops to sustain ourselves until we leave the Earth. Since it'll only be a matter of time before the planets collide, the next step would be to create large rocket ships to fly us out of the Earth. With Mars, Venus, and Jupiter revolving close to us, it won't be easy to do so. All the space debris will be blocking us from exiting the space zone area. 
The only safe place outside this region will be many millions of miles away, where only single planets exist. They may or may not have the conditions to host life. But humans will have the technology to land just about anywhere with similar gravity and construct the right shelters. Eventually, Mars, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter will collide with each other and break like eggs. Like a big space omelet. Don't forget the moon's crashing and breaking in the mix, but we'll already be far, far away by then. Hopefully. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.